And it's kind of like an urban, it's the urban core where there's uh, seven or eight uh, pretty big clusters there. But they are dispersed. Uh, they're, they're 10 or 15 uh, megaparts of each other. So there's no super deep hole at the bottom. Uh, so that's, yeah. It's, and then we're out at the uh, outskirts, the suburbs. You mentioned that the, <coughs> the, uh, that follows more or less, agrees with the standard model. What does the model, <coughs> what does the standard model assume? Yes, so in other words, what might be, if, if one doesn't like, is looking for an explanation. Um, the explanation perhaps that I would like to think about is um, <coughs> Um, a variable vacuum energy, where vacuum energy has been increasing. Uh, you know, the standard model has, uh, it just has the lambda term, which is a constant uh, dark energy term. But if that's not a constant, if it's growing, it could explain this. Yeah, uh, this is about minimizing the velocity monopoles. I mean, most of the observations, as far as I understand, are, say, within a few hundred megaparsecs. Yeah. So how can we minimize uh, the velocity monopole? Maybe this is non-zero, so this may relax the tension between the plant measurement of other parameters and the measurement here. Well, of course, everything I'm doing is essentially zero redshift, even if it's out of You know, I, everything I've got here is within the 10th velocity of light, almost all within a five uh, times the velocity of light. So this is today's measurement. Yes, so, so I need to say that when you say that uh, the velocity monopoles basically, you, you set it to edge zero. So how much uh, relevant that is because the measurements are within few hundred megaparsecs. <coughs> so if I average the velocity, say, within few hundred megaparsecs, then yeah. it is actually non-zero. It is not uh, really zero. Um, <coughs> Are you